storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this morning's service in this brand new year. For me, the new year is like the dawning of a brand new day. It is the opportunity to start over and begin again. It's like a blank canvas on which I can paint whatever colors I want. Because whatever happened last year, that was then, and this is now. Whether you believe it or not, just by being here today, you have embraced a new opportunity to paint your own canvas, a new opportunity to grow your relationship with God and with our brothers and sisters. So it is in that spirit of new beginnings that I invite you to join with me in this morning's prayer of invocation. Let us pray. Oh God, here we are on this Sunday in this brand new year. Whatever happened last year is in the past. So as we move forward, we invite you, oh God, to come and lead, to come and guide us along the way. Please come into our virtual worship space a place that we have lovingly and with all good intentions created just for you. Lord, we need to feel the power of your love, your mercy, and your grace. We are here today to draw upon that infinite well of the Holy Spirit, asking you, O oh God, to meet us where we are. We pray, O oh God, that today you will bless all that we think everything we say and all that we do so that it will bring you glory and give us everything that we need on this day and in all the days to come. This is our most earnest prayer offered humbly in the name of Jesus, our revolutionary example. So let the God that we love be here with us and may God's people all say, Ashe and Amen. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. His creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe and the revolutionary Holy Spirit which would not long permit people to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader, sent by God to rebuild the Black nation Israel, to liberate Black people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalism constitutes the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of Black people. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. That both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and, and program. program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church.
stony the road we tread, bitter the jasmine rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet As I was preparing for this morning's service, I was thinking about the iconic movie, The Lion King. And there was a scene in that movie that I think is particularly relevant to us as we embark on a brand new year of opportunity. As you may remember, Simba was reluctant to return home because of his past. Suddenly and without warning, Rafiki hit Simba on the head. And yes, that bump on the head hurt. Rafiki's response, so what? Just like that pain on the head hurt, the past can hurt too. But then came his words of wisdom, yes, the past can hurt, but the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. True, like Simba, many of us were hit on the head last year, often more than once, and sometimes pretty hard. But my prayer for you today is that you are no longer ruled by any past pain that you will learn 
from the things that hurt you, from the things that disappointed you last year, and to use the pain of those experiences to propel you forward in this brand new day God has given each and every one of us. So come, let us pray. Almighty, all-powerful, all-miraculous and gracious God, we come before you this morning knowing that everything that happened last year was for a reason and for a purpose. And while we had some experiences that may have been deeply painful, we know, oh God, that you are the healer of all our hurts, the redeemer of all our pain, the restorer of all that has been lost. So Lord, this morning we, we embrace the opportunity to begin anew, to move forward, to not remain stuck and mired in whatever happened before, but to openly be receptive to all the good that is in store for us this coming year. And Lord, we thank you in advance for speaking to our minds and to our hearts, for being with us on this life's journey, helping us, oh God, to fulfill the calling upon which you have given us the breath of life. And so, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to say we trust you. And we want to say that we will serve you today and always. Let the people of God all say, Ashe and Amen.
around the beginning of every new year, we often resolve to do things differently, to let go of negative or self-destructive habits, and to rectify behaviors that are counterproductive to our health and well-being. But in too many instances, we neglect the aspect of our being that requires the least amount of effort but yields the greatest potential for our overall success. We forget to protect what matters most. While losing weight, exercising more, quitting smoking, saving money, learning new skills, these are all honorable goals. But our soul, our spiritual health, our faith, our connection to the unseen reality, the grand source of our being, is what keeps us grounded, centered, and steady through all the tests, trials, and storms of life. You don't have to be a doctor to know the cures for stress, anxiety, depression, loneliness, addiction, and even suicide cannot be found in pills, capsules, bottles, or prescription meds. Jesus taught his followers and disciples that it is our faith that can make us whole again. Whether we're talking about the body, the mind, or the soul, all healing begins on the spiritual level. So when you address the spirit within, you get to the root of the problem. This two-year pandemic has shown us in no uncertain terms the challenges of trying to address the matters of the body and the mind without also addressing matters of the spirit is a waste of time. While your mind may be filled with confusion over whether to wear a mask or not, whether to social distance or not, whether to get a vaccine or not, your soul has no confusion. Your soul knows what the body may not. Your soul knows what you need if you would only listen to the call of the Spirit. Too many folks, regardless of their political persuasion, allow their own mental rigidity to prevent them from hearing what their own spirit is saying to them. I'm reminded of the scripture from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, which tells the story about Martha and Mary when Jesus came to their home to share a meal with his disciples and followers. According to the New International Version of the Bible, it reads, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Martha was upset because she felt Mary was neglecting her role and responsibility by tarrying with the group, rather than assisting her in the mundane tasks of the moment. Martha was busy preparing some food for the body while Mary chose to be a part of the group encounter where her spiritual hunger might be fed. When Martha goes to Jesus and disses Mary for refusing to assist her in the duties of a good hostess, Jesus replies that Mary has chosen what is better. Living in a mundane culture of hectic schedules and the relentless pursuit of capitalistic productivity. We are often tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are. Like Martha, many folks feel the chaos of being pulled in different directions, worried or distracted by frivolous things. With the World Wide Web at our fingertips via smartphone, laptop, or desktop computer, we literally have an endless supply of digital distractions to keep us preoccupied every single minute of every hour of every day. For many people, technology, Meta, Facebook, Google, TikTok, Fortnite, Roblox, Bitcoin have become the new gods that we can see to which we devote all of our spare time, energy, and attention, giving worship and reverence to these preferred digital idols, all to the detriment or to the neglect of our own friendships, family relationships, commitments, 
or responsibilities to others, as well as our own mental and spiritual health and our own wellness. Just like Martha, too often we forget to listen and respond to the call of the Spirit. Lest we forget, we live in an age of unprecedented mental anguish. Even before the pandemic began, depression, anxiety, stress, substance abuse had already reached epidemic proportions globally. In 2017, over 66 million Americans reported to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health that they had been binge drinking within the last 30 days, while another 20 million met the criteria for a substance abuse disorder. Health experts say 31% of American adults will develop a full-blown anxiety disorder at some point in their lives, while the World Health Organization reports 264 million people on the planet suffer from depression, the third most costly disability worldwide. Over 17 million adults and 16% of all American youth in late adolescence suffer from some form of depression. Many others suffer from less debilitating, though still painful conditions such as burnout, chronic stress, trouble concentrating and connecting, loneliness and isolation, to feelings of being hollow or empty inside. Only half of those being treated via psychotherapy or antidepressant medications find any relief of symptoms within a year. And most find that when they stop taking the drugs, depression or anxiety return. All this preventable illness stems from the simple fact that we've neglected to take care of what matters the most. Scientists recently conducted brain scans of participants who reported religion or spirituality played a low or no, of no importance in their lives versus those who reported that spirituality or religion was a primary aspect of their lives. And what they discovered was two very different brain scans. The high spiritual brain was much healthier and more robust than the low spiritual brain. They found the high spiritual brain was thicker and stronger exactly in the same regions where they were weak or withered in the low spiritual brain. Their conclusion was that religion, spirituality, appeared to protect the brain against mental suffering. You see, each of us is endowed with a natural capacity to perceive a greater reality and to consciously connect to the life force that moves in, through, and all around us. As African people, we have always been keenly aware of our spiritual aptitude, our long legacy of faith, cultivation, and spiritual practice, which has kept us through some of the fiercest storms of life. Even though traditional Christian theology has kept us in a state of misidentification, which has perpetuated our second-class citizenship, on the same hand, our faith, our faith practice, has kept us from losing our total mind and succumbing to all the wounds, problems, and losses of our past. This is why we cannot afford the mistake of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Our beloved founder, Jeremoji Abebe Ajima, taught us many reigns ago that the rituals, sacraments, disciplines, and practices of Kua, the ancient African science of becoming who we already are, provides all the tools we need to transform our conditioned minds and generate the spiritual power so essential to our liberation struggle. That's why Jesus was trying to get Mary and Martha to understand the difference between their thinking. Martha was worried about material things, serving food and drinks to the guests, while Mary was trying to protect what mattered the most, her own spiritual health and well-being. So Jesus responded to Martha simply by saying, Mary chose the better part. It was the same response he gave to his disciples in Matthew 6, 25 through 38, when he said, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap 
or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry what you are to eat or what you are to drink or what you shall wear. For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Our best self theology teaches us that the most high wants us to flourish, not flounder. But in order to grow, like Mary, we must seek first the kingdom of God. We must pursue the call of the spirit. We must access the life force of incarnate divinity within, placed in us at the moment of creation. Spirituality is the aspect of human existence that explores the subtle forces of energy in and around us and reveals to us our profound connectedness. Depression, anxiety, loneliness are all the result of feeling empty inside. And the medicine we need is not to be found in a bottle or capsule. The only cure is through inner fullness. When we open ourselves to the spirit, we can find that inner fullness. We find that we are not alone. We find that there is a comforting presence inside us. We find that there is always a way out of suffering. And while there are many avenues for spiritual engagement, I want to share with you four effective practices that can enrich and enliven your spiritual health and well-being. Number one, exercise your faith. A simple way to do that is by expanding your prayer life. Faith in prayer means being open to the possibility that your thoughts have an effect on the world out there. A prayer is just a special kind of thought a higher intention. If it makes a connection with the unified energy field out of which all energy comes, it may come true. Pay attention to the people, the circumstances, the places and the events that show up in your life. Everything that happens to you is an opportunity for learning how to deepen your faith and grow your inner divinity. Meditation, if done regularly, is another effective tool to cultivate your faith. At the start of this pandemic, we had daily meditations, which helped to provide a context for what is happening in the outer world so that it can be effectively integrated through your own inner world. Meditation can relieve our fears, worries, doubts, and our uncertainties. During meditation, you can use music, candles, scriptures, a word, a theme, or just your own breathing to connect with the God incarnate. Number two, live in closer communion with nature. Nature is the repository, the home for everything we need, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Likewise, our African ancestors taught us nature is the container for all medicine, regardless of what the nature of the illness may be. Our relationship with the natural world and its natural laws provide us a gateway to healing and wholeness. Every tree, plant, hill, mountain, rock, and each thing that was here before us emanates or vibrates at a subtle energy level that has healing power, whether we know it or not. By listening and paying attention to nature, we can find the medicine we need at the moment we're seeking it. Nature is not only what we can see, but also what we can't see. The ebb and flow of energy through the natural elements of water, fire, earth, and wind. Just being in sync with the changing seasons and with the cycles, rhythms, and patterns of nature allow us to find access to a greater energy flow within. Number three, incorporate more ritual in your life. There are many paths to cosmic energy and creative intelligence, and just as the scripture states, if you seek, you will find. 
Not only do rituals help to break down barriers and bring us together with others, but rituals also serve as a pathway to the spirit. Personal ritual, family, or small group ritual can replace corporate ritual during times of pandemic. Ritual is an intentional effort to transcend the mundane and to connect with the higher power out of which we were created. Everything in life is connected. So ritual serves to enhance the bonds that we share with others. We can use FaceTime or Zoom. We can connect with a few others and explore our spiritual needs together as a unit. Just ask the spirit to lead you and allow the ritual to unfold. It doesn't matter if it's an earth ritual, a nature ritual, or a water ritual. Each one will dissolve imbalances and restore a higher sense of union and communion within. You can engage in a personal ritual while sheltering in place at home. Ask Alexa to play some African music and get your African dance moves on. You can release tension and chaotic energy you've been holding on to. Watch your spirit transport itself from a place of chaos to a place of inner peace. The spiritual path offers us a portal to what's needed to reclaim the power within us. Number four, stay connected with your ancestors. My beloved friend and brother from another mother, the late Molly Doma Patrice Somme, taught us that our lives are inextricably linked with the ancestors in ways that we don't often recognize or consider. Even though we are often unaware, we are surrounded by ancestral energies that are constantly trying to remind us that we are not alone that we have some spiritual allies if we seek to include them in our busy, busy lives. Our ancestors want to be involved in our affairs, but we must invite and include them in our lives by honoring their memory, their legacy, and their eternal presence among us. We have to give them an assignment, which can be carried out from the other realm, assisting us in ways that otherwise would not be possible. So as we venture into this new fire year, 2022, we must not forget to remember what truly matters most. Beyond all of the daily dramas that are being played out on the world stage, we must stay rooted, grounded, and focused on our own spiritual essence and rely on that spiritual resource to aid us in our times of greatest need. So if this is your first time tuning in to our virtual village, we welcome you and we invite you to come back again and again. Just visit our website, www.shrinesoftheblackmadonna.org and you will find the spiritual nourishment that you need that will aid us in our struggle for wholeness and self-determination. Ashe and amen. Walk in the light. Shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, and we will walk in the light. Oh, you. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of today's worship experience. I hope that it has blessed you as much as it has blessed me. And it is also my hope and my prayer that something you experience today will equip you, enable you, empower you to face and embrace the week ahead as we bring 
this worship service to a close, I ask that you join me in our prayer of benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, Amen and Asheh.